everyone, welcome back to another episode of my Cottagecore Let's Play Survival Series. In the last episode, we made this villager conversion area so that we could convert all of our villagers into zombies and get better trades. We also expanded our mushroom village and included three new mushroom huts for our villagers. But what are we going to be doing today? Well, today we are finally going to be building up a farm that's going to generate us a lot of emeralds. Yep, we're doing a melon and pumpkin farm today. I don't want to waste time, so let's get building. Given the abysmal and straight up stressful state of our sheep farm, I think today what I'm going to do is go grab some new sheep, pen them up by themselves, and then we should be able to just grab their wool. Also, small side note, I did end up getting a one emerald trade on Sharpness 5 books, so now we have a Sharpness 5 sword. I suppose we could use that on the sheep if they don't want to come willingly. I'm just kidding, I promise. These sheep love us. They're going to love living with us. I hope. I've got six sheep. I'm going to make them a little pen and I'm going to be off camera chopping all of their wool off and grabbing all these blocks because we're going to need them for the build. And while we're waiting for our sheep, I'm going to go and collect some sand because I don't have any sand left and we need to make some concrete and some concrete powder. And don't judge me for taking a texting break in the middle, okay? Back at the base, I'm crafting up some green concrete powder and some lime concrete powder because we're going to use both of these in concrete form and powder form in the build. Also, I don't know if I'm the only one who feels this way, but one of my favorite sounds is actually converting concrete powder into concrete. I still need to gather a few things, but I really need to decide where I'm going to be putting this farm today. I think having it nestled over here near our villagers, kind of maybe in this area, would be a good spot. There's a lot of unused land here that we could definitely convert into a farm. I find it ironic that I live in a flower forest, yet I keep removing all of the flowers to keep building, but I'm gonna water bucket all these flowers again to remove them. And then from there, it's time to continue clearing out some trees and hopefully have enough space once we're all said and done for the size of the farm that we wanna make. All right, this is definitely enough space for the build and the farm. And what I'm gonna do now is do some off camera fixing this grass. And then it was time to chop some wood because we need a lot of dark oak. This is going to be my first time using dark oak in a build in this world and I'm super excited. I know it seems like we're going pretty fast today, but we have a lot to get done. And this is the outline for the build. The gray wall is for where all the stone is going to go. And then the blue is the wooden posts that are going to be outside for detailing. I've got all the materials already and I'm ready to start building. So let's keep the time lapse and I'll walk you through it. The first thing I did for the build was to follow the gray wool outline and replace it with stone, mossy, cobble, and stone bricks, giving a nice foundation for the building. After that, I replaced all of the blue wool blocks with the stripped dark oak beams and then connected it all with a beam on the top going around the entire build. I used some stairs to pop out the second floor and then I put the beams and started filling in the walls with calcite, diorite, and white wool. And then after we filled in the walls, it was time to add the outline to the roof and I added some little peaks above the windows to add a little bit of shape to the roof. Then it was time to actually fill in the roof and we started with a dark green gradient up to a very, very lime gradient with all of these different blocks and it looks amazing. I really feel like it fits the build as well, adds so much color and of course fits the farm. From there, it was time to add all the details onto the front and back of the build with lots of stairs, trapdoors, slabs, and everything else you can think of. On the left side, I wanted to do a little market area where you could come up and buy the fresh melons if you were in the flower forest. So we added a little stall here and it came out really super cute. The pop-out parts of the build still need their roofs, so we added the roofs on both sides here. We still have a little bit more detailing and building to do, like filling in the walls, but we added some oak leaves and then we were done. And it's looking amazing, friends. So far, I'm super happy with this build. I love how it's coming out and that it resembles a lot of the other builds we've already made. And just look at that roof. Absolutely chef's kiss. The inside of this beautiful building is still empty as we haven't built the farm yet, but I've been thinking, and don't judge me for this, I might not do an interior in here and only keep it a farm. This big spot right here is where the farm's going to go. And I'm going to go get this stuff to build it. But gosh, look at the color combination of that spruce to that dark oak. They color match really well together. I just noticed that. Okay, I'm back with all the stuff that we need for the melon and pumpkin farm, and we're about to get ready to build it. I'm super excited because the build is beautiful, and soon it'll also be very, very efficient as well. So I was listening to music and I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing and I mined out this whole area. I only needed to mine out the middle. 
Then I had to place all the stones back down. Oops. And then I started laying the track and I was trying to connect it all and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't make it work. And I was getting frustrated. I was scared and I was screaming and then I figured it out. Once I had it working, I put the minecart on the tracks and then I started to place the dirt. I put down the water and the shroom light and then started to plant up all of the melons and pumpkins. Then I added a temporary block border on the top so that I could place the pistons. Placing the pistons is one of the harder parts so you have to kind of look at this little line right here between the blocks and then be very careful while you're placing. But if you look directly right, yeah, there. I don't know how to explain it very well, but that's where you look. I filled in the rest of the pistons and I got super annoyed by the minecart below me, but I didn't want to go and remove it because I was lazy, so now we all have to suffer. After that, it was time to remove the temporary cobble border that we put on the top. And in the gaps between the pistons, we're going to be adding observers. They're going to watch for changes in the melon and pumpkin stems so that the pistons know when to activate. So to place the observers correctly, you look at the stem and you wait for the black border to go up around it and then you place once you're hovering over it like that. And this could look different with other texture packs or other cursors, but that's how you do it. And then once you have them all filled in, then we're going to be adding the redstone and we're going to add that on top of all of the pistons. I think that's right at least. Now to make this a little bit more efficient and lossless, we're going to add a glass border around where the pistons are able to push down the melons and pumpkins. And then I'm going to add just a few decorations that you might be able to see from the outside. Not too much because I'm going to leave the inside just way open. I am going to cover up the rails in the minecart underneath though because I find them super ugly to look at. So I'm going to use some trap doors just to not disturb it. And then we should be good to go once we get these all around. I have so many melons that I've been collecting over the last few days of playing in this world that I just want to put melons everywhere. They're such a cool texture. After I put up this shelf with these leaves on it, I am going to go AFK for a little bit so we can see how the farm produces and make sure it's working properly. So I'll see you in a bit. I AFK'd for four hours and I came back to this. Um, well, something's not working correctly. <laughs> Let's try to fix this. It was the redstone. Yep, the redstone's on the wrong spot. I need to put the redstone on top of the observers and not on top of the pistons. But after I fix this, it should be working just fine. Let's put the piston back. Then we're gonna remove the cobblestone. We're gonna put yep, that back and put the glass back as well. I was walking around the build and I noticed that on this side, the wall looked a little bit strange just because there was nothing up there. So I have a plan. I'm thinking we make a little pop out window there and we can make that with some lime glass because it'll be that same kind of green that we're going for in the roof. So let's right here, remove all of this really quick. I'm gonna put a lamp here to add some light and then put the glass in front of it and it'll kind of be like a little pop out bay style window. And it doesn't really matter that we won't be able to use this because you know, it's just for the aesthetics. Okay, added all the details to it. I think it's gonna look great. And yeah, that at least breaks up that white wall. Yeah, the, I love that. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing, buddy? I think he's trapped in a rose bush. Aw, poor buddy. Okay, now I'm gonna move all this stuff away and we're gonna work on a path. After I moved away all those chests, I added a path out front and what I wanted to do was link up the market to the main pathway. And then I thought about putting a little melon and pumpkin garden out front and alternating the melons and pumpkins so that it would look really cute. While working on everything else and also doing a little bit of AFK time, we've got so many melons and pumpkins to use now, so let's get trading. Okay, I actually think that we're gonna need to go get some more villagers. One eternity later. All right, I finally got these villagers into place, but none of them have the trades that I want. I want carrots and potatoes, and none of them are, are giving me the right trade. They're also being quite annoying about taking jobs quickly. They're just kind of staring at each other, so I will bring you back in a few minutes when they're done. Okay, finally, one of them has the correct trade, so I'm just gonna level this guy up. Hopefully he gets pumpkins and melons. Okay, he got pumpkins, nice. All right, level up again, please, sir, please. And he got melons, thank you, thank you. These other two villagers though, they are um, quite, you know what, the worst. You're both the worst. 
I've been doing a little bit of light AFKing and wow, there's um Enderman Enderman grief all over. I'm gonna fix this really quick. Let's check our chest. Oh. What? They they took a block out of my farm. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Enderman, why? Enderman, why? AFKing though is paying off and we are making so many emeralds and I am so happy. I wish I could auto craft these into melons, but I don't think there's a way without mods. Here we are once again, asking you to have the correct trades and no, you don't. Why do these villagers hate me so much? Why do they hate me so much? I just had an idea to bring some more detail to the front where our melon and pumpkin patch are, but it's going to require us to get some candles. I also got some sea pickles for added flair, but here I think we should be able to add on sea pickles and candles to the top of these melons and pumpkins and it'll look like little stems. Oh yeah, that's cute. That's like super cute. All right, let's see how we feel with the whole field. Oh, I love that. I suppose we should also check on these farmers and make sure that they have... Wow, okay, finally, finally. Thank you. Pumpkins? Oh my gosh, you're you're actually the best villager. You know what? You're no longer the worst. And melons. Okay, now that we have all three of these villagers, we are actually getting a ton of emeralds and this is such a good thing. We're gonna be so, so rich. Of course, it's super useful to have all these books, but also the golden carrots. We can also trade from clerics, we can get ender pearls, and even bricks from mason villagers as well. There's so many good uses for emeralds. Villager trading is kind of OP. But before we end our episode, there's one last thing that I wanna do today. And our map has been updated and it is looking so, so cool. I love this flower forest so much. I hope you all had an amazing time watching this episode and that you really love our new build with the gradient, with the melons. I personally love it. I will catch you all next time. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for watching.